If you've ever eaten catfish, crispy fried in cornmeal, simmered in peppery broth, or tucked into a delicate rice paper roll, you've a tasted a fish that very likely crossed an ocean to meet your plate. Soft-bodied, bottom-dwelling, and surprisingly delicate once harvested, the catfish is not the type of creature one imagines riding trucks, braving airports, or gliding through customs. And yet, more than 5 million tons of farmed catfish, most of it processed, some of it alive, move across borders and between continents each year. It is a global choreography of water, ice, silence, and speed. Beneath its unassuming skin lies a logistics operation that stretches from the humid deltas of Vietnam to the urban markets of the Middle East, from southern U.S. fisheries to cold chain corridors in Eastern Europe. This is how a mud-loving fish, once seen as a humble peasant catch, became a passport-wielding citizen of global trade and the remarkable systems that carry it along. In the thick green weave of Vietnam's Mekong Delta, a web of earthen ponds fans out like veins across low-lying land. Here, the climate is generous and the water warm. These ponds are shallow, usually around a meter and a half deep, their beds slowly stirring with motion just beneath the surface. This is where the majority of the world's Pangaceous catfish, the breed most widely traded, are raised. Harvested by the ton and exported with stunning efficiency, Vietnam alone accounted for over 1.7 million metric tons of catfish in 2023, much of it destined for tables thousands of kilometers away. From Vietnam, Nigeria, Bangladesh, and the United States, where commercial catfish farming began in earnest in the 1960s, the global output now exceeds 5 million tons annually. But raising that much protein is only half the challenge. The real test is in moving it across time zones, climates, and regulatory borders without losing freshness, quality, or value. The moment catfish leave the water, the clock starts ticking. This is a fish that bruises easily, softens rapidly, and begins to spoil within hours if not handled precisely. Harvesting is a coordinated operation. In the Mekong Delta, Workers wade through thigh-deep ponds with long drag nets, gently funneling thousands of fish toward one corner. A hydraulic pump, essentially a wide stainless steel tube, lifts them out and into holding tanks mounted on trucks. These tanks are filled with oxygenated water to keep the fish alive and reduce stress. Pangaceous are air-breathing fish, able to gulp oxygen from the surface, which gives them a slight edge. But even they have limits, Time, temperature, and stress can quickly reduce survival rates and product quality. In the southern U.S., vast commercial ponds stretch across rural landscapes in Alabama, Mississippi, and Arkansas. The ponds are larger and the equipment more mechanized. Small boats glide over the water, pulling seen nets that trap the fish near the banks. Instead of live transport, most fish here are processed within minutes. They're stunned electrically, then bled cleaned and chilled in a rapid sequence designed to preserve texture and reduce microbial risk. Speed matters. The goal is to get from pond to packaging line as fast as possible, ideally under two hours. Once processed, the fillets are flash frozen and vacuum packed, destined for domestic grocery stores or international buyers from Europe to Asia. But exporting catfish means more than just packaging. International regulations demand a level of consistency and cleanliness that requires precision at every stage. In the European Union, for example, maximum residue limits for antibiotics and heavy metals are enforced rigorously. One misstep, like a slightly elevated level of formaldehyde in the water, or trace amounts of unapproved additives in the feed, can halt an entire shipment. For producers, these rules are both a burden and a guide. Following them means gaining access to valuable markets. Failing them can mean financial disaster. Even once processed, catfish must be kept cold. Very cold. Inside each shipping container, there is a delicate balance at play. A typical refrigerated container carries around 27 metric tons of fillets stacked in neatly sealed bricks, all kept at minus 18 degrees Celsius. Just a small fluctuation rising even one or two degrees, can trigger ice crystallization, 
which breaks down the soft flesh and ruins the texture. These containers are monitored constantly. Some are equipped with GPS and remote thermometers, transmitting data back to logistics teams in real time. On a three-week ocean crossing, those few degrees make the difference between premium product and rejected cargo. Not all catfish are frozen. In Nigeria, where catfish is both a dietary staple and a source of national pride, fresh fish is king. More than 80% of catfish sold in urban Nigerian markets are transported live. To make that possible, trucks are retrofitted with fiberglass tanks, each filled with aerated water. Portable oxygen cylinders and battery-powered pumps help maintain conditions during long drives, sometimes over 12 hours across rough roads and unpredictable traffic. In hotter months, some transporters add ice blocks to keep water temperatures stable. The goal is to deliver fish that are still moving, still breathing. Signs of freshness that buyers trust. Every country has its own methods. In Bangladesh, catfish are often moved by motorbike, in blue plastic barrels sloshing with water. In smaller towns, vendors carry them in buckets, walking door to door with live fish. The logistics are simpler, but the challenge remains the same. Keep the fish alive, or at least keep them fresh long enough to sell. Across all these systems, the focus is unwavering, speed, hygiene, and control. Whether packed in ice slurry for filleting or swimming in oxygen-rich water for sale at market, the catfish must be kept stable until it reaches its next step. Environmental pressures also shape the trade. In Vietnam, saltwater intrusion is pushing farms farther inland, increasing transport distances. In the U.S., Droughts have forced some producers to reduce pond volumes, while in Nigeria, fuel shortages have made it harder to run aerators and chillers consistently. These aren't abstract concerns. They're real constraints that force innovation. Some farms are now experimenting with solar-powered oxygen systems. Others are testing biofilters to recycle transport water and reduce waste. What unites all of these efforts is the need for predictability. When you're moving millions of tons of fish every year, even small delays ripple outward. A road closure near Lagos can spoil a shipment. A refrigeration glitch on a container ship in the Gulf of Aden can mean tons of fillets need to be destroyed. The systems built around catfish are layered with backup plans, redundancies, and decision trees. In this world, a single fish may start its life in a muddy pond, and within 48 hours, it can be sealed in plastic coded for traceability, and stacked in a cargo hold bound for Moscow or Dubai. This is what it takes to move soft-fleshed fish across continents. Not just nets and trucks, but refrigeration algorithms, stress reduction strategies, and regulatory fluency. The work is steady, quiet, rarely visible to the people who eventually eat the fish. Yet in the next phase of this system, beyond the ponds and initial processing, a whole network continues the handoff cold chain corridors, packing line robotics, real-time temperature controls, and the exacting rhythms of international distribution. In a chilled warehouse along the Mekong, fillets of catfish move with quiet urgency. Just hours ago, they stirred in shallow ponds under the sun. Now, under the hum of industrial refrigeration, they pass from blade to vacuum sealer, destined for markets thousands of kilometers away. Workers sort them quickly but precisely, every cut shaped to match a distant preference. Some buyers want them thick, others lean, others paper white. Each box is a code of logistics. Harvest time, pond origin, chilling temp, market destination. These fillets never freeze by accident. They pass through ice slurry tanks where saline water cools them in minutes. Liquid ice surrounds the flesh more completely than cubes ever could. Locking in firmness before air has a chance to dry the surface. From there, they move into pre-chilled packaging rooms where air itself is scrubbed and kept cold, ensuring bacteria don't have a head start. Once packed, the cartons are loaded into reefer containers, temperature-controlled chambers where a two-degree fluctuation could mean rejection at the port. In Lagos, fish are moved alive. Inside fiberglass tanks mounted on pickup trucks, Catfish swim under the glow of solar-powered aerators and spare oxygen tanks. 
The roads are rough, the hours long, but freshness is king. Vendors monitor water clarity and carry frozen bottles to cool the tanks when midday heat creeps in. Here, logistics isn't always high-tech, but it's every bit as precise. Meanwhile, in air cargo warehouses near Ho Chi Minh City, catfish trimmed to near-perfect uniformity are packed for flight. Time from harvest to aircraft is often under four hours. The cargo, lightly glazed to prevent freezer burn, is bound for hotel kitchens in Dubai, restaurant chains in Warsaw, catering firms in Doha. Each fillet, seamless in shape, is the product of chilled hands, consistent feed, sharp knives, and perfectly timed movement. Across seas and skies, the system flexes. When shipping lanes shift or demand surges, containers reroute, storage extends, packaging adapts. From ice slurry to aeration tanks, it's not spectacle that moves catfish. It's control, cold, quiet, and constant. In the soft, pale flesh of farmed catfish lies a quiet triumph of agricultural design. Its rise wasn't accidental, it was engineered. In pond systems scattered from Vietnam's lowlands to the southern US, catfish convert feed to protein more efficiently than most livestock. With minimal space and filtered fresh water, they yield high volumes of edible mass at a cost that undercuts even poultry. Their bodies respond well to uniform diets, grow quickly in warm water, and tolerate close stocking with minimal aggression. These biological traits, fine-tuned through decades of selective breeding, make catfish one of the most scalable proteins in modern food logistics. But production is only par part of the equation. What gives catfish its real strength is how cleanly it moves through global systems built for speed, volume, and standardization. In port warehouses along the Gulf of Guinea and the Danube Delta, forklifts raise palletized cartons of frozen catfish with a rhythm that mirrors container ships scheduled down to the hour. Inside each box is the result of a cooling chain that never broke. From harvest ponds to sealed packaging, from reefer chambers to customs inspection, the fish pass through a seamless sequence of controls. Biological, mechanical, legal, a temperature probe buried in a fillet might log hundreds of data points along its route, each one ensuring it never softened, never warmed, never drifted from the expected grade. Importers study those data logs the way bankers study spreadsheets. Predictability is value. Beyond its consistency, catfish earns its place through adaptability. In kitchens across three continents, it shows up in different forms but rarely announces itself. In Poland, it's folded into breadcrumbed portions for canteen-style lunches. In Nigeria, it meets smoke and pepper on roadside grills. In Egypt, it appears in markets under different local names, treated as native. It is unbranded but known. Chefs don't need to explain it. Consumers don't ask. It simply fills the space where protein is needed, reliably, affordably, and without drama. This quiet reliability matters more as global volatility grows. In years when floods submerge shrimp farms or feed prices push chicken beyond reach, catfish keeps moving. Its supply chain has absorbed fuel shocks, trade disputes, and even health scares with minor recalibration. During the COVID-19 pandemic, when air freight capacity plummeted, exporters leaned on cold storage to stretch viability. When shipping lanes slowed, they adjusted their packing schedules, freezing fish closer to harvest to extend shelf life. It is a system designed not for luxury, but for endurance. The environmental logic of catfish also aligns with shifting priorities. As consumers and governments grow more alert to the water and carbon costs of protein, catfish compares favorably. Pond systems use recirculated water. Integrated farms feed catfish with trimmings from other processing lines. Some operations even capture pond sediment for compost, closing nutrient loops. In a few newer Vietnamese facilities, solar panels now power the chilling units and lighting arrays. Small changes, but multiplied across thousands of containers and dozens of countries, they signal a protein adapting to the world it feeds. Nothing about this fish shouts spectacle, but in its quiet, dependable way, 
It supports families, vendors, truckers, dock workers, nutrition programs, and export revenues across much of the global south. A fish that once sifted through riverbeds has become an invisible spine in urban diets far from any pond, and it moves not on marketing, but on systems, chilling units that never fail, boats that arrive on time, and packaging that stacks just right in a freezer aisle. Its value is never in its name, but in the space it fills. Always there, always cold, always enough, from the low ponds of the Mekong to the freezer aisles of Europe. Catfish moves not with spectacle, but with precision. It is lifted, cooled, sealed, and tracked through systems that rarely make headlines, but never stop working. Behind every portion, grilled on a roadside, plated in a hotel, or simmered in a family kitchen, are the quiet marvels of insulated tanks, temperature logs, ice slurry chillers, and transport routes mapped to the minute. It is a fish shaped by calm repetition, not drama. And that's exactly why it endures. Next time you see catfish, fried golden, steamed with herbs, or laid neatly in frozen trays, pause to consider the network that brought it there. Not just the farm or the fillet, but the hands, the chill, and the care that kept it firm, fresh, and ready. Behind its soft flesh is a hard infrastructure, cold, clean, constant.